Peter Maguire uh, joining in, CEO at XM.com. Peter, good to have you on the show. Good morning. Uh, take us through how uh, you know global risk appetite seems to be. We are in a sort of a cooling off period after some very heated action that we've seen in the last week. Well, yes, and good morning. But I think we've just seen a little bit of a turnaround in the last probably 24 hours. We saw crude sold off, but then we saw the Dow and uh, the equity markets have a nice run up this week. Uh, sentiment, uh, I think, is returning as far as risk on in some ways due to the. I don't know whether it's a settling down, but certainly um, the North Korea slash Guam issues seem to have um, backed down a little bit in the last 24 hours, which for mankind I think is a wonderful situation. But I think it still has to work through, and uh, it's a little still a level of uncertainty there. But at the present time, um, the markets are you know coming back with a little bit of strength. Right. Uh, so, Peter, in turn, you know, if you talk about where Indian markets go, uh, we are seeing some of strength that is picking up. Uh, but overall, in terms of where flows are concerned in India, uh, FIs have still been sellers. Uh, do you see that changing over time now? Well, I think so. I mean, you've only got to look at the Indian market as a whole. Over the last, you know, five to six years, it's had a tremendous run-up. And any market that nearly doubles itself in that period of time has been outstanding. Um, so I think that you will see a continuance of, you know, uh, risk on, and not only that, but, you know, fund inflows. You put your mind back to, you know, 2013, you had a nifty at around about 53, 54, you know, 100. Now you're sitting at just on that 10,000 sort of number. It's really had, you know, there's plenty of um, momentum there, and I don't think that necessarily is going to stop in the, in the near term. Your IMF numbers, you know, growth numbers moving forward is, is, are quite astounding, and it's going to be the market to watch over the, you know, the next five to ten years. I, I think the focus has got to be very, very focused or very centred on, um, you know, the Sensex and the Nifty. Right, uh, uh, Peter. We'll come to uh, the Indian benchmarks also in just a bit. Uh, but are you sceptical of this uh, recent rally that we've seen in base metals, industrial metals, uh, given the capacity cut notifications of China? Because with how much seriousness do you treat uh, capacity cut notifications coming in from China, be it for steel or aluminium? Well, I certainly take on board that, but I also take on board that they've built warehouses and, and you know, stockpile levels up very, very strongly. It's still relatively cheap when you compare to a number of years back, and it, it shows good buying. The overall demand picture, I don't think, is going away either from, you know, industrial demand and, more importantly, you know, the building across the planet. You've only got to see the level of cranes and construction under, underway. And so from a demand picture, I think that that will only continue as each year rolls on. Um, so, you know, whilst, the, whilst we can have little hiccups in those markets and have a look at what copper's done recently, I think we need to be very conscious that, uh, you know, there's plenty of movement to the upside, I think, you know, over the next, say, three to five years that really is not going to wane at all. Right. Uh, Peter, if you're talking in terms of a crude is concerned, uh, in the month of August itself, we've uh, seen crude decline by almost 5%. Uh, apart from that, you have crew, uh, U.S. crude inventories that fell by almost uh, 9.2 million barrels in this week in terms of 11th August to 469.2 million barrels. Uh, overall, uh, what do you make in terms of where crude prices go? Do you expect uh, the downturn to now start continuing and, uh, you know, where we will see crude again going back to the a $40 barrel mark? Well, I don't think we're going to hit 40 but certainly over the last, you know, if you put your mind back over the last month, we've seen uh, large volatility swings. We had $46 on about the 17th of July. We had highs there towards the end of July at 50 This is for WTI, and we're sitting at around about that 47 and a half now. So it just shows, you know, large swings. Hedge funds and money managers are all over it. They're looking to... They were stacking positions. Now they're probably overbought to some extent. The other side is that the uncertainty as far as OPEC, what they're trying to do, and it seems to be locked in that sort of price range. You see those big pushes from 45 to 50, back down to 46, 47, and then it seems to settle down for a week or two. This this um, uh, trading volatility really hasn't altered in the last couple of years. It's been very much range-bound, but from a trader's perspective, you're picking up 3 to 5%, 7% moves in short time, and uh, it's certainly adding you know a lot of attraction there from a volatility play. Uh, Peter, what's your view on the dollar index? Uh, from the recent lows of close to 92.5, we bounced back a little close to 94. 
Uh, do you think that this is just a flash in the pan and now the weakness could persist further, of course, in uh, negative correlation with industrial metals? Well, I think a couple of things. First off, um, yes, we had that big washout from, you know, this time, uh, pardon me, around about uh, Christmas, there was a, that 103 sort of number. Now we're running at about that 9380. Yes, look, it, it was over, oversold probably. It's just bounced a little bit. The uncertainty as far as US inflation, we're talking now, you know, we're going to see a rate rise this year, another one, I should say, from Janet Yellen and her team. The jury's out, and I'm not really sure what's happening. Um, the dollar has certainly strengthened, probably due to those geopolitical concerns and President Trump's, um, uh, you know, global discussions as far as North Korea, and that's underpinned the dollar. So probably, you know, you could see a little bit further upside from here, you know, that 94, 94, 20 sort of number. Uh, but I think the overall consensus is that you're going to see a softer dollar you know, over the next six to nine months. And that storyline, I don't think it's changing too much. Uh, so, from a, again, from a trader's perspective, as far as currencies, uh, you know, th there's plenty of volatility, plenty of movement, and I think that that story really isn't changing over the short to medium term. Right. Uh, Peter, everything said and done, if you talk about gold as well, uh, we did see some bit of cooling off that has come in in terms of gold prices over the last two to three trading sessions. And this is uh, post the easing of, uh, if you talk about geopolitical tension uh, between North Korea and US. Uh, what's the outlook in terms of a gold course? Uh, do we expect the cooling off to now start off and continue in terms of gold prices as well? Well, uh, it's a... First off, I think that we've had a very, very nice move upwards, and it's probably just taking a little bit of a breather, considering where it was over the last, um, you know, this time last year. Since Christmas, we're up around about 12 or 13 per cent. I think in the last month and a half, we're up the best part of 7 per cent. It's been a very, very solid move, and I think that that story probably isn't changing. The US dollar certainly coming off has added to the to the uh, precious metal space. And then the other side, of course, is what's happening from a geopolitical standpoint. Um, we were at 1290 yesterday. We're back down to around about the 1280 sort of number now. Um, hasn't made a lot of trading in uh, Asia. It's been fairly flat for the last couple of hours. We've had a you know, 20, uh, 1276 to 1279 sort of trading range. Um, I think that overall, those, when you're looking at objectively that 52-week range, it's the best part of a rent about $240, $250. And um, I think that it shows, the vol again, the volatility, US dollar, what's happening there as far as yelling, where does the states play as far as US. Um, if, the, if we see a, a, a further push-up as far as equity markets, we might see gold more or less oscillate between that 1270 to 1280 number. But I think fundamentally, it's in a bull market. It's had a very strong move, and I think that will continue with a 12, pardon me, a, a 1340, 1350 sort of handle, maybe even by Christmas if that, if that um, uh, US dollar comes off further. Right. And uh, Peter, before we let you go, what's the view on uh, Asian emerging currencies? Uh, we've seen all of them, most of them being resilient. In fact, the rupee hovers around 64, continues to do so. We have had our trade data also, which continues to be a little dismal owing to that. Uh, what's the view on the rupee as well as what will your preference be among emerging Asian currencies? Well, I think if you look at it from, um, from the big picture, we're very conscious as far as what's happening as far as the uh, US dollar. Where does that play? What impact does it have if Janet Yellen doesn't have a rate rise? Um, if you're looking at the Indian rupee, I think that, you know, that 64, 65 sort of number is on the money. Uh, you might see a little bit further strengthening. Um, as far as the emerging markets, I mean, you know, the traders are, are certainly it's, it's very, very mindful as far as, you know, those big movements out there. And they seem to be the markets that traders are more or less uh, that in the euro versus US dollar, Japanese yen, but those emerging markets have got a great degree of um, participation and interest because, again, volatility. And, you know, the retail lands are, are very conscious as far as, you know, markets that they see those opportunities in. They're very, very mindful as far as where the US dollar interest rate goes and, uh, you know, as far as the Fed. And I think that in over the next couple of months, that volatility isn't going to go away. Or maybe even it'll pick up, depending upon geopolitical concerns on what's ha happening with North Korea. So 
uh, it's a weak, it's a day by day sort of proposition. But I feel as though you know the emerging markets are somewhere that a lot of traders centred their attention on due to uh, you know, further opportunity.